Hello, I'm the ghost of last year, and here's a uh, PowerPoint on speciation. Lesson four of this topic. So hopefully you've got pen and paper, you've got your uh, workbook, and um, you've got your textbook as well, or access to Caboodle, and those are the relevant pages. The spec, we're covering uh, a chunk of the main bit of theory and what, what students should be able to do, we'll, we'll discuss some of those. Quick recap, uh, time to pause video, look at these words and just, just write down maybe a couple of key words for each and see if you can remember the stuff from uh, the previous lessons. So press pause. If you didn't press pause, press it, do it, it'll do you good. Hopefully you did press pause and had to think about these words. Evolution. So this is change over time. So it's changing populations. Uh, evolution could mean it, changing anything over time, but we're thinking about populations and species. Variation, particularly within a, within a species. Some are taller, some are smaller, some are faster, slower. Some have different enzymes, some are different colors. So that's variation. In any population shows variation. Natural selection, we've done a lesson on that. And that is the mechanism by which change is going to happen. So mutations, overproduction, selective reproduction, and passing on uh, favourable alleles to the next generations. And so that will affect the next thing, allele frequency um, over time. Those are just the frequency of the, you know, the, the proportion of the alleles for that gene in the, pop in the population over time. Genotype, phenotype, you've done inheritance, so genotype, what alleles are present, phenotype, uh, the characteristics of the organism, or you know, what does it look like? Types of selection, we've done these last lesson. So things like stabilizing selection, where you thought, you know, the mass of babies at birth, um, dispersive or the disruptive selection, uh, where you know, the extremes are favoured and the middle isn't, and directional selection. Um, things like fur getting longer if the climate's getting colder. A couple of videos, you might have watched one on natural selection already, uh, but the Amoeba Sisters done a great video on speciation as well. So here's one of your, your first top definitions um, in the spec, evolutionary change through natural selection has resulted in a, a great diversity of species. And so here are some of the butterflies of the world. And you can see you know, lots of different sizes and colours and shapes. And you know, natural selection has brought this on. And speciation uh, means that these are now different species uh, they can't interbreed and produce fertile offspring. There's three parts to getting a new species, really. And we need, in a population, some sort of barrier to reproduction. So we need some parts of the population not being able to reproduce with another part of the population. And there's, there's two, two ways that that can happen that we'll talk about. So two parts of the population need to be isolated from each other so that they can't reproduce. Then these populations change over time. So then gene pool changes, uh, this thing called genetic drift, which is particularly uh, effective with smaller populations in new conditions. So changes in this gene pool. And eventually uh, we get new species when these, you know, if they met up again, they wouldn't be able to um, interbreed either because they were unable to. Their, their sexual organs might have changed, for example, or they might breed at different times of year, or they might just not like the look of each other. 
Here are the two isolating mechanisms, allopatric and sympatric. And if you look at the first part of these names, allo and sim, um, I quite often get these mixed around, but I always remember sim as same. And the, the second bit of it, Patrick, sort of, I think of place. So sim, Patrick, same place. And allo is different. Remember alleles in inheritance? Well, alleles were different forms of the gene, so different place and same place. And that's how these, these work. And so if parts of the population are in different places, that's what we say when it's geographically isolated. So separated by a sea, separated by a valley, on different islands, that, that sort of thing. Where uh, in sympatric, um, it's usually something to do with the behavior of the organisms. For some reason, they're not, not interbreeding. So the first one, allopatric or geographical isolation. Here's, here's the salamanders again, just run to, it's an example that you're used to. And uh, we've, got, we've got a barrier, which is this central valley here. And so we've got an original and ancestral population of salamanders at the top. And then they're, they're kind of wandering down south and they can either go one way down the, the edge of the valley or the other way. They don't go down the, the middle of the valley, it's too, too hot and dry. And as you can see, by the, by the time the salamanders get further down the valley, they've changed quite, quite dramatically. On one side of the valley, you've got salamanders with blotches, which um, help them camouflage against predators and blend into the, blend into the background. Whereas on the, the other side of the valley, you've got um, salamanders that seem to have gone red, but they are mimicking the uh, red poisonous newts um, that live there. And so predators won't eat them because they think they're, they're poisonous newts. And by the time they get to the, the bottom, um, these are called the ring species, so they are, in theory, capable of, of interbreeding, but currently if these interbreed, they produce a hybrid, which, which doesn't survive there long because it's neither one, one or the other and will tend to get eaten. So they're, they're on their way to becoming a, a species. Um, and we've, we've dealt with the, the natural selection of these that produces these in, in another PowerPoint. So the natural selection that's causing this change. So we, we've dealt with that, so we won't go into that. There is a nice video. Uh, if you click the link on the PowerPoint, um, you can see these salamanders wriggling about and, and someone, someone talking about them. So your job now, it might take you, might take you uh, 10 or 15 minutes, just uh, mock up on a piece of paper, um, a quick sketch of these salamanders and try and get these three these three parts the isolating mechanism the genetic drift and the new species in, in the story and try and use these words along with these words up, up at the top here to describe what's what's going on and you've 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 seen all of these you've seen all of these words before so pause the video See if you can put this into, into some paragraphs using these words. And uh, we'll have a look at that. So pause now and have a go at that. Hopefully you've had a, had a go at that. So we've got, um, at the top, we've got the ancestral population of salamanders that, that are kind of quite varied. And we think about this isolating mechanism. So what's the isolating mechanism? That is geographical in this instance. So the central valley isolates the population on one side to the population on the other. And then how do we get genetic drift? Well, the climate 
on the two sides of this valley is different and so you tend to get different vegetation and that leads to different kind of food chains, food webs and so on. So we've had this separation of the population, the two different climates on each side um, each contain kind of a population of salamanders and they've got different um, selection pressures. You know, for example, different different predators. Um, this one's got some poisonous newts on there as well and this one's got kind of vegetation that you'd quite like to be camouflaged against. And because these populations are quite small, then and you get this genetic drift, which is a change in the allele frequencies due to natural selection uh, fairly quickly. So the gene pools of these salamanders, by the time they've kind of wandered down here, are different to each other. And uh, can they interbreed? And, and if they can't, then they would be uh, a new species. You know, and we, we mentioned possibilities there why they couldn't in, in, interbreed maybe they they would make a sterile offspring or an offspring that wouldn't be able to live for some reason or another so they're on the way to becoming new species the other type of speciation was sympatric remember that's saying the same place so why are two parts of this population not interbreeding and there's lots of different mechanisms for this you don't need to learn all the mechanisms we just need to be re recognized that it's sympatric whichever example you get um, I'll, I'll cover one behavioral mechanism there are some more in the textbook and, and some questions you can do we don't need to learn them all just be able to recognize them so the example that, that we could look at here is the apple maggot fly. And there's two kind of races of, of these, or two sections of the population, the apple and the, the hawthorn. But you notice here, our pomonella, our pomonella, they're actually still the same species. So they could interbreed with each other and produce fertile offspring. But for some reason, they're not. And here are the two fruits that um, this insect uses to feed and reproduce. So we've got the hawthorn and the apple. And what happens is um, flies that, that lay their, their eggs in the apple um, produce maggots and, and then they develop into flies. And, and likewise for the hawthorn as well. But Flies that develop from apples only tend to reproduce with other flies that come from apples. And likewise with the, the hawthorn, they only tend to reproduce with other hawthorn uh, flies, even though they could reproduce. So it's a behavioural thing. And um, if they carry on and the, the gene pool drifts further, then eventually they, they might be on their way to becoming a new, a new species. So that's one example. So now another time to have a, have a little pause and similarities and differences between the two types of speciation, allopatric and sympatric. So just try and jot down a few words that, that you could use for similarities and differences. Okay, similarities. So they both involve some sort of reproductive separation, either um, physically or uh, behaviourally. And they both will eventually end up with this genetic drift and differences in the gene pool that will lead to the speciation. Differences, just talk about you know, the geographic separation in allopatric, whereas the kind of behavioural separation in sympatric, you know, they're, they're not actually physically separated from each other. And you could possibly talk about different types of sympatric uh, speciation. Right then, uh, lesson five, um, you've got some uh, workbook examples and uh, then we can go on to the, the assessment book examples.